Hey everybody, Brian Wright here, and welcome into another edition of the New Patient Group Podcast. Before we get started today, I want to let you know in the description below, there is a Calendly link. And if you click that link, it's going to allow you to access my calendar. And in that, I am giving away three free business consultations, the very first three people that sign up. It's a little bit of a scalability issue. I can't take really any more than that. But if the first three people that sign up for that, I'm going to give you a 15 to 30 minute business consultation, and we can dive deep into your practice. I'm going to give you some assignments to do to go back, some numbers to find, and just some different ways we can help you, your team, your business, and your practice. Okay, so take advantage of that. Again, the very first three people uh, that take advantage of that are going to get to meet with me for that 15 to 30 minute consult. All right, now let's dive into another edition of the New Patient Group Podcast. Welcome aboard the New Patient Group Flight Deck. Less chaos. Check. Less stress. Check. Less advertising costs. Check. More personal and financial freedom. Ah. Check. All right. Business checklist completed. Let the takeoff roll begin. Welcome to Season 7 of the New Patient Group Audio Experience, a podcast dedicated to forward-thinking doctors wanting to learn innovative ways to run their business today so your practice can achieve new heights tomorrow. And now your host, he's the founder and CEO of New Patient Group, managing partner of Right Chat, and a trusted motivational speaker for Invisalign, OrthoFi, and others. Brian Wright. Hey, new patient group and Right Chat Nation. Welcome inside the broadcast booth. Brian Wright here and welcome in to another edition of the New Patient Group Podcast. YouTube followers out there. Hey there to all of you. Thanks for your partnership and following the podcast. Please thumb this video up, share it with your friends and colleagues. Same for the audio experience listeners out there. Hey to you too. Thanks for following us and give us a nice five-star review on iTunes or wherever you may be listening to the podcast on. Going to be diving into one today. You know, we're coming off a two-month series around customer service, what it actually means, the importance of having a definition and understanding or making sure your team and you are on the same page of what you're trying to carry out and, and signs of how you're getting there, the pinnacle of customer service. But then we just came off a series teaching you how to accomplish it and wonderful feedback. I hope all of you really took to heart what that definition actually is and why we go about things the way we do here with New Patient Group. And if you haven't had a chance to listen to that series, go back into May, listen to May and June. You're going to get a lot out of it. Today, we're going to be diving in. And actually, as I do this podcast today, I'm just coming back from Whole Foods in our area in Colorado Springs. And there's something that propelled this podcast forward to doing it right now. And I'm going to be able to tie that story in with another story uh, that happened. And I think both stories, you know, stories make things powerful. So uh, both of these stories are going to make it even more powerful around the message today, all around the existing patient experience. It is very hard uh, a lot of times to convince uh, a lot of you out there that your employees are not experts in customer service, hospitality, these things. It's not an insult, but the reality is the fact all of you trust people when you're not looking to carry out your brand in a way that represents you in a great, wonderful way, in an unexpected way, and is always advancing your brand forward. It is really scary that a lot of times you don't see more value in making sure your people are receiving the ongoing training required to handle all the scenarios they're put in. And today, the reason why I wanted to move this up the list because this whole food scenario is, again, it's the perfect thing that we talk about is that all of these consumer interactions – they have nothing to do with healthcare, orthodontics, dentistry, really at all. And the other day we were on with a customer, and we've been together for, for a long time. Uh, great lady, like her a lot. And we're talking, uh, Coach Eric and I are on a, on a Zoom call with her, and we're talking about, you know, we've been working on new patient experience stuff for a long time now, a couple of years. And now we want to transition slowly into the existing patient experience. So after people sign the contract and, and what's going to take them into a super fan to go out there and refer at a high level and interact with your social media channels and making sure that your customer is treated in a way that is unexpected, just like that's what it takes to get new people to buy from you at the highest level. It's the same way with your customers, your patients. And she was sitting there and you could tell, you know, it, it, it didn't really get her excited and she didn't know she wanted to move into that yet. Maybe we need to work on the new patient experience longer and didn't even know she was going to do it. And while we're talking, 
to her and her office manager, there was a front desk girl or a girl in the office that came in and said, Hey, I need to talk to you. And you know, the doctor and OM were like, Hey, could you hold on? I'm like, sure. So girl talks to her, they come back. And what happened was, and this was right in the midst of me describing to this practice, how important it is because of all these interactions and they couldn't see it. You could tell. And this girl comes in and what happened was, is a patient showed up to pick up their clear aligners and the aligners weren't there. And, and I kind of chuckled, not because that's a situation I wanted to have happen to them, but it, the fact it happened right in the middle of me talking about the importance of this was awesome because this, everybody is a perfect example of what I'm talking about, right? One, the breakdown in communication internally with the office and nobody even notified this customer, this patient, and this person, whatever, they could have taken off work. They could have rearranged their day. Right? A lot of it, and this is topic for another time, but a lot of you have to understand, you know, your 10-minute appointment for you, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, guess what? It's a couple hours for the person you're having come in. And, and that's what you have to remember in this scenario, right? They're just coming to pick up their, their aligners, but they could have rearranged their entire day. Heck, they could have moved meetings to another day because of this to come get their aligners. Well, they show up and they're not there. So one, we have a breakdown of communication internally and then a breakdown in communication from that to your customer, to your patient that's paid you high dollar, right? So that's one. Two, I ask all of you out there, if, if this happened to you, right? Your patient walks in and they're talking to make-believe name Betty, do you have Betty repetitively trained in a way that you know for a fact that that situation, right, that unpleasant situation is going to be handled in a way that advances your business to the next level, right? Is she going to say, you know, Mrs. Jones, I am so sorry that we inconvenienced you and we value you so much as a patient. It means the world to us because you know you have choices without people like yourself. Uh, you know, I wouldn't even have a paycheck, so we're going to make this right. Whatever we can do, ma'am, you know, tell us what we can do, right? Uh, we are so sorry that this situation happened. Next time the aligners come in, I tell you what, we're going to go right to the office and we're going to mail those to your house uh, and make sure that convenience of that happens. Or, you know, we can hop in a car and I can drive them to you and make sure they fit, right? And, and of course, I'm just, I'm, I'm off the cuffing here. But what all of you have to understand is, is this is probably how that was handled, you know, sorry, the aligners aren't here. We need to reschedule, right? That's the extent of probably how it's handled, right? Are you thanking people for their business? Are you thanking people for their trust? Are you apologizing when things happen? Are you saying, what can we do to make this right? Are you going the extra mile maybe to make the next appointment even more convenient? And I understand, right, a lot of times why they have to come in. There's there's processes you need to go through. I totally get it. But what you have to understand is, is, is that right there is a trained person on how they would respond. At some point, I'm going to have a podcast that talks about the new school way of customer service versus the old school and how a blend is the most beautiful way to create unexpected experiences that drive results in your favor. And I'll give you an example that's taken from, I haven't shot that podcast yet, but I'll give you an example of one that, that I'm talking about. A lot of times, you know, we're big on videos and QR codes. And, you know, instead of you visiting all the dentist office, if you're an orthodontist, you know, just get a nice piece of marketing with a QR code and do the video and, and have the video play off your YouTube station to all the dentists and all the doctors you want to refer, right? One tiny example, that's new school, right? That is a, a convenient experience for both you but also the people you want to advertise to and get to know your brand, or if they already know your brand, keep your brand on their mind. And, but there's also, and that's obviously one of a million different ways of going the new school way. One of the old school ways that still works beautifully, and I know it because a lot of our practices do it, are handwritten notes that are mailed to families' homes. And, and the impact that those have are, are so powerful and can't be underestimated. And the way my mind works, when I mean, we talk existing patient experience here, right? This, this is on the topic of outside, you know, after they sign the contract. This is where old school customer service comes in. One, you know, teaching people how to speak and, and apologize and thank people for their business and their trust. And if it weren't for people like you, I wouldn't have a paycheck. Like there's an art to that. And it, that art does not come 
from the idea. The art comes from practice and role plays. Practice and role plays. Practice and role plays. And I'm saying it over and over again because that's the culture you need to create. If you truly obsess over your customer, this is where your mind always needs to be, right? This situation happened. Now, what can we do? And I'll tell you what you can do. One, all we've already talked about it, right? The, the verbiage. But also afterwards, doctor, office manager, one of you two needs to immediately do a handwritten letter that day, mail it and get it to their house fast as you possibly can, right? On top of that, in case they go out of town, they don't see the letter, whatever it is, one of you needs to do a little selfie video. Again, OM or doctor, nobody else. Get on there, put your face on camera, do a quick selfie video and text that to their cell phone, right? It doesn't need to be more than 30 seconds, 50 seconds, five zero, 50 seconds at the most, right? And there's a series of events, right? And that's where the existing patient experience comes in. Series of events of one, culturally, it starts with obsessing over your customer. If you don't obsess over the patient, the customer, your mind will never be in this place because you don't think this way. And this goes back to every business on the planet needs experience training. Every one. There isn't one that exists. And the ones that are famous get it. Right? They get the training because they're obsessed over their customer, which is why they become famous. Right? So it starts with culture, one. Two, it's stating your expectations and how you want things to go and having meetings about it. And role-playing with your team and putting them into scenarios, right? So it starts, too, with your training, right? It goes from culture, mindset, leadership, to then how you train your people. But then all these ways to where if something does happen, how do we handle it? Okay, we've got the verbiage and presentation skills down, which, by the way, that verbiage never happens if you don't have a culture that obsesses over the customer and works on things to make the experience better. Next, you've got to go deeper, right? Front girl, Betty, again, make-believe name, handles the situation. Hopefully, she nails it because of the training and the culture you have. Now, you've got to go deeper. Leadership team, you must be involved, right? Handwritten letter to go out to that patient, apologizing, right? Maybe you send them an unexpected, you know, $50 Visa gift card. I had a podcast about that, about United at some point. Right? So you've got unexpected experiences that really, what does it do? It drives results in your favor because they are never going to accept. Look, businesses suck at handling situations like this. They're terrible. For every one you get that blows you away, there's hundreds, and you can all relate to this. Your dry cleaner messes up your clothes. How do they handle it? Your hair cutter messes up your hair. How do they handle it? The restaurant messes up your food. How do they handle it? And time and time again, it's nothing special. Some do it better than others, right? One may have a smile on their face. Meanwhile, the others don't, but there's still really nothing special about it. Why? Because very few companies see value in obsessing over their customer, like we're talking about today, being a people over procedure, people over service, people over product operation. And by the way, when I say people over procedure, I owe Dr. Rob Schaefer for that line because I'm going to use it for the rest of my life. I heard him say that at our last on-site. So props to you, Rob. Love you, dude. I don't think I gave you props when I said that people over procedure before. So I, <laughs> I promised him I would do it now. Right? And then so you got some old school customer service there with the letter, handwritten. But then you got some new school with the video. Right. And I would argue, even if they don't get the letter, the video is powerful. If they get the video and not the letter, the video is powerful. But if they get both, that's the ultimate situation. Right. So you've got a little mini choreographed journey starting always again with culture there. Then how you train your people. Right. Use a little digital marketing in there. Right. Got some videos in there. And then we got some old school hospitality with writing that hand letter. And that's how you must look at everything. That's the series we're coming off of. One of the reasons why I want to do it today is again, handling that situation and turning it into a positive that works in your favor is again, never about one thing. You getting what you want while delivering unexpected experiences along the way that help drive that is never about one interaction. It is an ongoing journey that's a commitment to obsessing over your customer. And if you just think this way, it is amazing what can happen for all of you as practices out there that charge five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars. You know, if you can just add a few starts a month to that, 
you have your best year ever. And this is a way to not have to advertise because you're turning your customer, your patient into the advertising for you by going inside your doors. Now today we're in Whole Foods and, and for those of you who, who follow me a lot, podcast, see me speak, customer, whatever it may be, or all the above, uh, you know, I like to cook, right? So uh, what a big pet peeve of mine is whenever you're going to cook fillets and you go into places and, and this, this could spin off into 10 podcasts, um, on, you know, show how to showcase things to make more money and blah, blah, blah. But it just but blows me away when you look in the window at meat places, or the meat departments in grocery stores, and you see cuts of meat that that look like nobody cares. They don't know what they're doing, right? It, it, there's slits in the middle. There are all kinds of different sizes. They just look like crap. And if you know anything about cooking, especially at a high level, you're never going to buy those because you can't cook them at a high level. If you have one that's four ounces, one that's six one that's nine, you know, one has a slit down the middle because there's a part of, you know, there's a part where they get that meat from the animal and, and that portion of the animal, it has little slits in it. So it cooks unevenly and it just comes out a mess. So if you, if you know what you're doing, you are never going to buy that meat. So today at Whole Foods, I, I asked the guy, so those are unusable, um, you've done this for me before. It's usually a headache, but you could go cut. I need three equally cut eight ounce fillets from this part of the animal. And that's what I need in order to cook tonight. And this guy looked at me like, and he actually said the words just in a little bit different way. Like, uh, sir, that is such an inconvenience. Like these are the, what we have in the window. We're trying to get rid of these first before we cut into the new mag. This is what he's saying to me. Right? Now, he didn't say you're inconveniencing me, but that's what he said with his words. Right? We're going to get rid of those. Those who find these, fine. We're going to sell it to those before we cut any more. Right? This is a place, and I've had other podcasts in the, the past about this stuff, and I already have a podcast recorded, pre-recorded, coming out I don't know when, that tells another story about this at Sprouts, which we'll never go back to. Sprouts is a farmer's market grocery store by our house in, in Springs. So now I'm sitting here going, okay, where the hell are we going to go? So we looked up, we found a butcher. It's like 20 minutes away. We went and got a beautiful cut of fillets. That's what I'm going to cook tonight as, as I do this podcast. And, and again, it goes back to, it's the same thing, right? How that guy needed to be trained. He even said to me, you know, I guess in this tone, I mean, I guess I'll go in the back and, and ask my manager and see what we can do like that. Like basically middle finger, sir. Like, how could you inconvenience me like this? And a lot of your employees out there do stuff like this with body language or, you know, they're wearing a mask whenever they're trying to communicate something. So you can't see facial expressions and the facial expressions may be a smile, but you can't tell because the mask just comes across differently. Like, there are so many scenarios like this meat scenario and like this clear liner scenario. If you sat down and you took notes and thought about every single scenario that your hourly employees are put into every single day, every single week, every single month, every single quarter, every single year. And are you really comfortable with how your brand is being represented in all of those scenarios? Have you placed people in those situations and made them role play their way out, given them feedback, coached them on how to handle that situation? We call it conflict resolution. And when I was still an umpire in professional baseball, this is stuff you would go through hours upon hours upon hours of rigorous training and role plays around psychology and body language, posture, verbiage, tone, what to say, when to say it, how to say it, what never to say, right? And, and these are things, you know, that, that again, we do inside practices. Like this is one example of many, but this one example is actually hundreds of examples that we take. You know, we say, okay, a patient's upset. They can't get an appointment when they want go. Like, how do you handle that? Right. And we see how they all handle it. And every practice handles those situations like this one. Joe shows up to pick up his clear liners. Clear liners aren't there. Go. How do you handle it? And I, we take all these scenarios, you know, that we've just tracked over the course of time and people just like the new patient call. If you, if you called and mystery called, you guys have heard me say this a thousand times on here. If you mystery call a hundred practices, ask them the same questions. Every receptionist responds the same, 
right? Which makes all of you the same whenever I'm shopping and calling five practices. You have a framing effect issue, period. You have a value proposition issue with the inability for your team to be able to speak in a way that sheds value and light on why you're unique and different and why me spending two more thousand dollars with you as opposed to 2000 less with the other two places I've been, why it's worth it. Right. But if you're able to convince people of that, then you've got to back it up after they've signed the contract. And these interactions, everybody, I cannot tell you how much it moves your brand forward. And and this is back to the infinite versus finite minded people. Right. There's very few people out there that when they think about growth, they think about the scenarios I'm talking to you today as a way to grow. Right. Meaning that the way this was handled one by that practice, two by Whole Foods, like you're never going to be able to put your finger on that like you can your Invisalign bill being yanked out of your bank account. But I will tell all of you, it costs you more money. Like that person with the clear aligner scenario is never going to send a referral to that practice, period. That's a $6,000 if that's what you cost on an average case fee. That's how you have to, that's how you have to look at this. With the inability to create a fan, Right, Creating a satisfied patient is not a referral source. It's not somebody that turns into your sales force. It's a satisfied patient just like a satisfied customer. Right? What you're trying to create out there, everybody, is a fan of your business just like your fan of your practice. Those are two different things. And the non-clinical interactions will determine whether or not they're a satisfied patient or a super fan of your practice, period. You have to see how you especially for those out there listening, which is the majority of our following, that want to be a high-end brand. If you want to be a high-end brand, it's even more important to teach people how to speak from those that have bought from you than it is to teach people before they buy from you. And this is such a different message. Like, when's the last time you went to a you know an event and people up there talking about this? No, it's a bunch of advertising crap. Marketing, more of this, more of that, more of this, more of this, more new patients, pay-per-click, more, 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 more. Then all of you wonder why you're chaotic all the time. When if you just slowed down and, and looked at marketing... As everything, every interaction your team has with each other, how you have it with your team, how your team has it with you, how you all have it with people you want to buy, how you all have it with people that have bought. It is so critical, right? Like the Sprouts, whenever that podcast goes live, you'll see it then. But right now is Whole Foods. Whole Foods lost our business forever. Now, can you get away in, in certain, you know, in certain situations, yeah, like the clear liner scenario, like it's not like that guy's going to want his money back, right? But how it was handled leaves a sour taste in people's mind. And, and it's unfortunate, but how we're built as humans is, you know, if I have 20 interactions with your business and 19 of them are really good and one of them suck, that's the one people remember. I mean, that's why it's so hard to be an unbelievable brand because that's what you deal with is that you could be great time after time after time after time, and all of a sudden, one thing takes away from the immersive experience. One employee ruins it for the other 10 that interacted wonderfully. And this is why the culture matters so much, because everything I'm talking about here, again, goes back to in a culture that obsesses over your customer, obsesses over your patient, a culture that's infinite-minded that says, what can we do today to be more innovative, more convenient, better for the patient, better for the customer than we're doing today? Like this is the mindset, and this is a perfect example. When many of you think of growth, you immediately think pay-per-click and, and train my TC and why all of that can help, of course, and that's all stuff that we do except for the pay-per-click. We don't want to do it because we teach everybody, put your money somewhere else, you're going to get a higher return, right? Don't use a Band-Aid, fix the wound. Pay-per-click, if you have to do it, Band-Aid to the wound of what's really going on. Every dime, all of you out there, by the way, this is off the cuff, spend on pay-per-click. You should cut it off tomorrow and invest it inside your doors and train your people the way I'm talking about. And it's hard work, and but it will produce both a short and long-term result that pay-per-click can't do. Everybody, you got to see value in this. And an exercise that I have for all of you is I want you to sit down and I want you to brainstorm and think about every single scenario that your team has that interacts with your potential customer and your customer, your potential patient and your patient. And ask yourself, is your brand being moved forward every time, right? Or is it leaving these little sour tastes 
here and there. Because again, it's not a criticism, but for those out there that think that your assistants are nice, your people are nice, and that means you're experts in hospitality, you're missing the mark. Just like the last two months of what we did, the reality of the situation is that unless you are training and receiving training from people that have deep expertise in this stuff, you are losing opportunities like you cannot believe. They're everywhere in your business, just like this clear liner scenario. You will never be able to put your finger on the loss, but it is there. If you have the right mindset as a leader, hope everybody enjoyed today. All right. Big lesson. This is from our existing patient experience and teaching your team how to train in a way that moves your needle forward. If you are interested in the existing patient experience, because it goes far beyond what I'm talking about today, make sure when you click in that Calendly link and set up a consultation with me, remember the first three people I am offering it to. The first three people, if you're interested in what I talked about today, make sure to put existing patient experience in there. And if you're not, put whatever you're interested in to get started. But this is such a big way. If you want to skyrocket referrals, skyrocket five-star reviews, skyrocket interactions on your social media channels, your YouTube station, this is what will do it, right? Transform that existing patient experience. But this message, everybody, it happens in every business It is a people-first business, just like all of you. Move your brand forward by getting your people trained on how to handle scenarios and turn negatives into positive outcomes. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.